Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. Last, last week I had the pleasure to present uh, on a local Python user group conference in Vilnius and my session was about Skipper. I was uh, explaining to the folks uh, how you could use uh, Skipper to simplify uh, your microservices application or system deployment to uh, either Docker environment or Kubernetes. And probably the main point is Kubernetes because Kubernetes, especially for the new people, uh, looks like uh, very complex and the main aim or goal of Skipper is to simplify uh, deployment on Kubernetes platform, either um, it would be local or on the cloud. So to, in this video, I'll give you one example and I'll show how it's easy to use uh, uh, ML ops uh, on top of Kubernetes and, and how you could scale uh, container that runs uh, TensorFlow.js uh, uh, server-side Node.js implementation uh, for mobile net model and how you can scale it to multiple instances. And I'll show you how uh, in Skipper we do communication, how messages sent through the RabbitMQ message broker and uh, how you could scale up and down. So let's, let's see how it works. Let's go to my screen and first of all, uh, let's give you a brief uh, overview or introduction about uh, Skipper. So here we get a high level um, sort of diagram, right? And you can see that Skipper is based on three main parts, engine, communication, microservices. So microservices group is a sample set of services that is coming together with Skipper, but you could replace this group with your own services. But by default, uh, you will see uh, containers for data training and serving, going to have much more containers and so on. Then there's a communication part is uh, done with RabbitMQ because all those containers, they need to somehow communicate between each other. And it's uh, much better instead of doing tight uh, coupled communication through direct uh, REST calls, it's better to use intermediate uh, uh, postman like a RabbitMQ or Kafka and send messages through this intermediate postman because uh, if something happens uh, with one of the containers or you need to do maintenance of one of the containers and so on, it's much easier to replace containers and um, control the entire system when you have this indirect communication. There's a skipper library which uh, uh, hides uh, specifics of RabbitMQ Python API and it means if in future you would like to replace uh, RabbitMQ with uh, Kafka, then there will be no need to go uh, to your custom containers and change the API code over there because um, the calls are made through a generic skipper library. And the third part, engine, which is generic and can be reused. Uh, so first of all, there is a Nginx, pro Nginx proxy. Uh, then there is a fast API container, which is responsible to publish um, REST endpoints to the outside. Then there is a, a workflow container, which is uh, at this moment is fairly basic. The main goal of workflow container is to map um, and route requests that are coming from the outside to fast API to map them with the proper queue names and send messages to the RabbitMQ. So, so that the logic would know where, where the message should, should be submitted. In future, this can be enhanced and so on. And there is a salary component uh, container which is responsible for asynchronous task processing. Uh, like when we have a long uh, running task like a model training, we want to submit this task and get back the result later when job is done. This is this uh, this is done through the salary in our case. And this logger container which uh, provides the public endpoints to all other containers uh, and those other containers could submit um, event to the logger container and log requests, log, log data in the central part, uh, central place. Okay, and Skipper runs, there are three ways to run Skipper. First one, uh, you could start each container like a separate project in a different, as a different process on your own machine with the virtual environments, that's the first option. Second option is you could use uh, Docker uh, containers and run it either on your own machine or on cloud. And the first option is to uh, build Docker images, but don't use Docker for to run containers, but use Kubernetes to to run containers inside Kubernetes pods. And I would recommend to go with Kubernetes option when you run production system and when you uh, need to achieve um, uh, better scalability, for example, 
and have the option to scale up and down your system when running in the cloud, for example. Okay, so today uh, example will be, I'll show how you could scale uh, Kubernetes pod running on top of Skipper to multiple instances and how requests are uh, routed through RabbitMQ. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go to another browser tab. This this UI is coming out of the box from uh, FastAPI. There are multiple groups of the sample API implemented in Skipper. Uh, we'll be looking into the mobile net group. Okay, this request, uh, it makes a call uh, to the backend and it, it tells to try to classify uh, orange image. Uh, and in that image, this uh, orange uh, is uh, basically, this is a picture of the orange and mobile net model will return classification scores and will, will try to identify what is uh, actually, what are the objects in the, inside that image. And uh, I don't have goal to uh, use like complex or advanced models uh, here at this at this point of time. Uh, the main focus is on the infrastructure and the model ML model which we are using is uh, it's just an example. So we are not we don't have a goal to get some state of, of the art ML model results and so on. Okay, let's go to to the log and uh, let's see the infrastructure. What infrastructure we are running right now? There is a single port for for the mobile net service. And we can go and uh, open probably a log uh, for this port. So whenever we actually we execute in this port, then we should see the log, and um, this would help us to understand that the lo logic is, is running fine. And right now it's a one instance. And we go to the RabbitMQ dashboard to the queues and Skipper Mobile Net. Uh, queue and we see that this one consumer as expected because it's a single pod right now with single container inside so we have one consumer okay we go to the fast api and try to execute the request okay and we see that the request was executed in mobile net uh, pod log and we got 98% uh, probability that this orange located in this uh, orange picture, which is obviously correct. Okay, so if we go back, we see that there was one message was sent and it was uh, successfully consumed by the uh, subscriber or consumer. Now let's go and, <clears throat> and scale mobile net to multiple pods. So we'll go over here and we say that we would like to create uh, two replicas of mobile net uh, pod. And we review the infrastructure again. We see that new pod was created right now. So now we've got two pods uh, for mobile net. And we could go and print out uh, the log for this new pod. So for that, we need to copy the name of the pod that we would like to open log for. And we go here and replace the name. All this uh, thing will be replaced with the proper name. And now we get the lock for for the second port. So let's go and clean up the lock in the first one, clean up lock in the second one. And by the way, we should see that RabbitMQ automatically displays that there's a new consumer. So now we've got two consumers. And what, what I love about RabbitMQ is that it works out of the box with Kubernetes. And when we scale Kubernetes uh, pods to multiple instances, to multiple consumers, then this new consumer is automatically is able to register with the RabbitMQ. And RabbitMQ knows that there are multiple con uh, consumers right now and uh, it's a cluster environment. And when the new message comes, it will be distributed to the first consumer. When second message comes, it will be distributed to the second consumer and it will work in a round robin way. Uh, so it will be like a cluster. So all the load will be distributed uh, across uh, different nodes. So the replication would work. Uh, there's another mode, uh, operational mode uh, in RabbitMQ available, which is called fun out. If you need, you can uh, send exactly the same message. You can distribute it to all the consumers at once. So it depends on the use case. In this use case, we want to uh, handle load with uh, different nodes and we want uh, to, to work with in a round-robin way 
and uh, send one request at a time to the one node, second request to the second node, and so, so on. So this way we could distribute the load evenly. Okay, now we can go and back to the to the log, and yeah, we see that first there is no log on the first port, no log on the second port. We go back to the uh, endpoint, click execute, and we click on the first log, we see that uh, action was done on the first port. There's nothing printed on the second one. So the first message was distributed to the first port. Okay, let's go and click execute once again. Now we see that uh, information is printed in the second port, as expected. And if you go and click multiple times, like one, two, three, four, then you will see that two requests uh, will be processed by the first port, like we see here and two other requests will be processed by the second port because it's an even distribution. And if you go to RabbitMQ dashboard, we see that uh, messages were successfully received and processed by the consumers. Now, if we don't, if at some point of time we don't need multiple instances, then we can always scale down. So for example, I'll exit from the log and I'll go to, again to the same command where uh, when I created a second instance and now I'll say I want a single replica of mobile net uh, port and if I review the infrastructure I'll see that one of the ports is terminating, the one that was created uh, recently actually. And uh, with Kubernetes you have the option to do auto scaling and define certain rules when the traffic is higher than um, Kubernetes could uh, scale up uh, uh, port instances and when traffic is going down, then it can scale down. This is especially useful when you're running your solution on the cloud and uh, it would uh, help to minimize uh, costs that you, you pay for the, for the cloud environment, for the Kubernetes. <coughs> okay, so um, my point was to show that Kubernetes is simple, especially with Skipper because they provide out of the box all the scripts, all the uh, API, all the templates that you need uh, to start with uh, either Docker or with Kubernetes. And this is the main goal of, of Skipper, is to simplify your, uh, your environment setup uh, either with Docker or Kubernetes. And ourselves are using uh, Skipper as the infrastructure uh, because we built our own ML product for document data extraction automation and uh, we are running all this um, logic on top of uh, Skipper infrastructure. So stay tuned and definitely uh, Skipper will be maintained in the future. There'll be new updates, uh, new changes, new improvements. And if uh, you, are, you want to use Skipper or you're already using and if you got any question, don't be shy, uh, drop me a message. I'll be happy to answer and, um, and help. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.